in, in your experiences with patients, you know, not maybe the newly diagnosed, but the ones who have been living with chronic illness mm -hmm. for a long time, um, do you ever have to can you know refer them maybe to mental health support for just the kind of maybe anxiety or depression that can come along with that? Well, that's right. So, uh, one depression rates are higher in patients with chronic mm -hmm. diseases, mm -hmm. especially uh, autoimmune diseases, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a lot for people to be told that they have a condition that they'll have to deal with long term, yeah. right? Or that they have to take a medication for the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and if they're having difficulty coping with that, you know, it's, it's going to be hard for them to adhere to the treatment yes. options, yes. right? So we have here at the Paula Clinic, there's a, we have a behavioral health specialist and mm -hmm. we can, I, I certainly send my patients there. That's, that's great. Is there any hot topic or exciting things happening in rheumatology right now that people might want to know about? Right, so I, I think this is an exciting time for rheumatology. There are several things that are happening. Uh, but to me, what's important and what I find interesting is I think there are more studies looking at whether we can identify subtypes, right? For oh. example, of rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. Because we have several treatment options, but unfortunately, we're not yet at that point wherein we can identify which patient will respond to a particular treatment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we can look forward to in the future. And maybe something right. similar to like personalized medicine. You know, right. you know whether drug A will work for, for patient A and whether right. drug B will right. work for patient B and eliminate some of the uh, at least initial guesswork, right? right. Uh, in right. terms of medications. And then, you know, one, one trend I've noticed as a patient and read a little bit about is that, you know, patients are active members of mm -hmm. the team, right? So we're actively help making decisions mm -hmm. in our own care. But one thing that I've had a little bit of challenge with myself as a patient is fig like figuring out at what point do I say, okay, well, my, my opinion as a patient and as like, I guess I'm an occupational therapist, I have some medical training, but not to the same mm -hmm. degree as a doctor, obviously. You know, if my doctor says, "Okay, what do you what do you think? What do you think about these two mm -hmm. options?" At some point, I'm kind of like, "Uh, I want you to tell me." You know, so right. do you have patients who are a little bit confused by that kind of power that has been given to mm -hmm. them, or are they more like, "Yes, give me the power. I want it. I want it." You know, do you know what I'm saying? Right. It's <laughs> like a you know, question you're, you're going in the grocery, oh. and then there are several different yeah. kinds of milk, right? And which yes. one are you going to get? Yes. So, uh, well, you know, I, I tell patients. Uh, you know, do something that, you know, makes sense to you, right? Right, right. Uh, and what you choose the first time, if it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't have to be the final option, right? That's true. So I tell them, you know, if you choose this drug, these are the benefits and risks. If you mm -hmm. choose this drug, these are the benefits and risks. These are the logistical difficulties, you know, with getting right, this drug right. over this drug. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we try, I, I try to help my patients, our, our entire staff tries to help the patients get, you know, to their first choice. Right. Uh, and right. if that doesn't push through, then you go to the second one. So maybe a, a, a message inside of what you're saying is that to use the support available to right. you as a patient. Because yeah, I used to think I had to do everything myself. You know, mm -hmm. I have to be in charge of following up with the insurance company. And, and in some degrees, I, some things I do mm -hmm. have to do. But yeah, utilizing all the support you have at your local clinic that mm -hmm. you go to. Is, is there anything else maybe you just want the general audience that doesn't exist yet, but it's going to be here, an audience of mm -hmm. people with arthritis and their loved ones and other providers, is there anything else you'd want to say? Right, so if you have joint pain or swelling, mm -hmm. right, you want to prevent long-term joint damage. Mm -hmm. So you should talk to your PCP and ask about seeing a rheumatologist. Yeah. Simple. He's very succinct. It was very helpful. Thank you so, so much. Oh no, much. thank you for having me here. Yay! Bye. <laughs> That's my hardest part is ending the interview. So I was like, okay. Maybe you should have like a signing off.
my, my nephew and niece, whenever I talk to them, they'll say, oh, that's one minute, goodbye, because apparently there's a YouTube video for, like, kids. Uh, I think oh, that's, uh, oh, that's so funny, because my son does that. He goes, thanks for watching my channel. Like, right, he's like, thanks it, for right, watching. It's from, um, with the, the, there's this boy who does, um, like, toy reviews. Oh, Evan, Evan Tube. Evan Tube. No. Is it, is it Evan? Else.